Okay, guys, what we're going to do today uh, is, in this video, is we're going to program the key up event for the rocket. And what basically the key up event's going to do are these four things. Number one, uh, you're going to figure out what do you need to handle. Number two, you're going to learn how to move the rocket based on its angle. And number three, you're going to determine if we still have gas. And number four, move the gas gauge while the rocket is accelerating. And number five, set the image of the rocket to the fire image. Um, the way this is going to work is that there's two images in the rocket. It's, um, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about screen coordinates. The way screen coordinates work is right here is 0, 0. This is where your origin is. And as you go down, you go positive and Y. And as you go across, you go positive and X. So if you look here, going down is positive and Y. So if you want something to move up, you have to make it negative Y. Um, it's a little bit different than what you're used to. If you want something to go right, If you want something to go right, that's positive x. And if you want something to go ne go left, that's the negative x. Okay, so right is positive x, and left is negative. Up is negative y, and down is positive y. So let's say we had a shape here. And you should be able to tell me roughly where this shape would be, where it is. So the y coordinate, it's about halfway down, so it'll be 150 down. And maybe it's this is 500 wide. Maybe this is 350. So let's say we had something here. This ball would be on top of this one. So this Y position would be less than this one. So this Y position might only be, say, 100. And this Y position would be 150. This X position would be greater because it's over more. So let's say this X position would probably be, I don't know, 400. And this one would be 350. All right? All right, uh, next thing I want to talk a little bit about is um, object rotations. So if you have a rectangle here and we want to rotate it to the right, you actually have to give it a negative angle. If we want to rotate it to the left, you have to give it a positive angle. For example, if you say add 25 to the angle, let's say the angle is just some variable that holds the current angle, and then you set the angle of image rectangle to the angle. This a little bigger so it's not cut off here. All right, so what this will do is it'll rotate it left because left is positive. If we were to say add negative 25 to the angle, if we were to do this instead of that, what would happen is the box would look like this instead. Right? Because you'd be rotating it right. So negative angles rotate you right, and positive angles rotate you left. And that's all there is to it. And the last concept I'm going to go over with you is what's a function or a command? Life code also calls them commands. So what we're going to do is we're going to say on mouse up, reset values. It's going to call this command. Uh, in the code, your code is going to hop down to here where it's going to say command reset values. And this will just reset all your values, whatever they may be. Now, you don't have to use this function. You could have simply, instead of done this, delete it, right? Take these and put them there like that. Now, it does the same thing. Your question might be, what's the advantage of using a command versus just rewriting the code? Either one will work. You just told us that. Well, the advantage is the following. Uh, let's say we want to reset the values three or four times throughout our program. That means we'd have to copy the same code over and over again four times throughout our program. A way to save keystrokes and copying code is to simply put it in a command and call it when you need it. It's, um, it also makes your code a, a lot easier to read. So that's, that's it. That's all you do. Just to review, we went through a few things. We went through how to use a command or function. We went through what we're going to do with the key up event. Okay, it's right here. Okay. We went through object rotation. Remember, if you go left, it's positive. And if you rotate right, it's negative, okay? And we went through screen coordinates. As you go down, it gets positive in Y. And as you go across right, it gets positive in X. If we go up in Y, it's negative. And if we go left in X, it's negative. That's it. That's all there is to it. Let's start taking a look at some of the code. Okay, so the first thing you have to understand is there's a couple things going on. So what I did for the gas is there's two images. Right? There's a blue image and there's a red image. And as the gas goes, I basically just, <clears throat> I 
I take this image and I move it like that. All right, that's a, that's kind of a, a little clever thing. That's how I solve the gas problem. Now we're going to go through how to do that, but that's what I did. That maybe isn't the best way to do it, but it's an easy way to do it. And let's take a look at this guy in the property inspector. So in the property inspector, we have I hate when that happens. Okay, so in the property inspector, what we're saying is we have the following. Unfortunately, live code uh, doesn't work right in XP, and you get some issues. But what we're going to do is there's two frames to this. So there's basically frame one and frame two. I'll I'll give you this file to start with. It's um, you know it's not a big deal, but that's all there is to it. That's why it looks animated. Just did it again. And the way I got it to look like that with the basically you know here's that and notice there's no fire here is I went into Photoshop um, and I made a, an animated GIF and then I just tweaked it in fireworks um, I just used some software that's all I just took two separate frames uh, I made it transparent <clears throat> which is which is pretty useful so you don't see any outline of the colors right so that's all there is to it that's all I did that's how you get the fire. You're just basically switching the frames. Could you have more than two frames? Absolutely. You could have 20 frames if you'd like. But in our case, we only have two. And again, I'm going to give you this file to start with, so you'll have everything set up for you. Okay, so let's take a look at our code. Let's get started here. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and global the following. The angle... <clears throat> moving rocket, speed X, S speed Y, S rocket X, S rocket Y, S game width, S game height, paddle height you don't need, paddle X you don't need, paddle Y you don't need, so you obviously don't need those, so that's it, these are the variables we'll be using. Um, <clears throat> so what you're going to do is on mouse up, you're going to call gameplay, so we, we talked about calling a command. So you're going to go ahead and, and hit this command right here. So what does gameplay do? Well, it starts putting a variable, a value into gravity. It puts 0.01 into gravity. If I were to tweak this value, it would change the way my game plays in terms of how quickly the rocket drops. So let's say instead of 0.01, I put point, 0 0.01, I put 0 0.1. That would make my rocket drop really quick. Put S speed Y into field label 1. Um, this was diagnostic. You really don't need that. Let's get rid of that. Put blah into moving rocket. This just makes sure that the moving rocket does not equal stop. You could probably put something instead of blah. You could put probably moving into moving rocket. That would make more sense. Put the left of image rocket image into S rocket X. And then put the top of the image rocket image into S rocket Y. So S rocket X and Y are going to be the top left of the rocket. And then uh, you're going to call this val function called start game values which we're going to do later and then you're going to set the angle of image rocket image to the angle which is zero to start out with because we didn't set it to anything and then uh, you're going to call your game loop so this is the code right here that I want you to focus on right now just make sure you go ahead and pause the video if you need to and type that in here you're just basically setting up it's actually all this you're just setting up your your basic you know um, value for S rocket X and S rocket Y. That's that's what's going to move the rocket around. So that's that's all there is to it. <clears throat> okay. After you've done that, we're going to go ahead and and uh, find out where start game values is. And I'm going to have you copy that code. So don't worry about all this right now. So here's start game values. Again, there's the move the ball. Just silly. We don't. You probably call it something different than move the ball. You could probably call it move the rocket, make more sense. But um, here's the function I want you to look at: start game values. What this is doing is you're putting 40 into S rocket X, you're putting 40 into S rocket Y, uh, you're putting zero in the speeds, zero into the angle, and you're setting the angle of image rocket image to zero. So what you're doing, what these two lines of code are doing, this is putting the rocket in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. That's all it is. Uh, these are making sure that your rocket doesn't fall. This is making sure that your rocket rocket image is straight. And um, this is making sure, this is resetting. If, if I leave this off, if I leave this line of code off, 
what'll happen is my rocket image will still be crooked when my game restarts, which obviously you don't want. You want the rocket to be straight. So that's what that does. So take a minute, pause it, and go ahead and copy this. Okay? So now you know what the start game values does. Oops. Again, take a minute and pause it and, and go ahead and do all that. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here for right now. All I want you to understand in this video is how to call the function gameplay. Uh, gameplay, what this is going to do, it's actually going to call another function game loop, which we're going to do later. But basically, it just sets up the rocket, right? It puts the left of rocket image in S rocket X and S rocket Y. It starts the game values and sets the angle of rocket image to the angle. So you're basically just setting up where the, um, where the rocket should be and its angle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. And then in the next video, we're going to go ahead and tackle this, uh, this, this huge function here and, and what all that's doing.